This is Dr. Sadiq Yildirim. Uh, Dear Professor, please go ahead with your presentation. We are sure. The is yours, sure. and we are listening to you. Uh, today is the World Cancer Day. It's a good uh, presentation. It's already in the First screen. of all, I want to thank to the organizing committee for the privilege of this presentation. I, have, I think we have a little technical problem here. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, the uh, incidence of cancer is increasing steadily. Uh, the uh, World Health Organization's uh, uh, list the lung cancer in the male uh, yeah. prostate, uh, colorectal cancer, and stomach liver cancer makes the first five most frequent cancer in the male. In the male, uh, it used to be breast cancer, the most frequent John cancer. Muscle, yes, they have learned from the it. health and organizations the, list that the uh, first, uh, most frequent first cancer is uh, 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 breast cancer, colorectal, cervix, lung cancer, and the uterine cancer makes the first. Uh, most frequent cancer in uh, females. And then, uh, uh, cancer death in male, most frequent is lung cancer, uh, the second is colorectal cancer, and the prostate cancer is the third most frequent cancer. In female, in female, it used to be uh, lung cancer, but now the breast cancer is the most frequent reason cancer death in female. Second is lung cancer, and colorectal cancer is the third. Leukemia, and pancreas, and usually And the, the good news is, uh, health risk lowered during the past 30 years, achieved particularly in stomach, breast, uterus, colorectal and female cancers. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, there, uh, as you see in this diagram, uh, as uh, the incidence of cancer is increasing, uh, the uh, death rate from cancer is decreasing uh, significantly. Progress achieved by many measures caused this decline in cancer mortality. First, we uh, first uh, improvement in diagnosis and treatment, imaging, uh, radiation uh, oncology, development in radiation oncology, and in surgery, and the medical oncology, in medical oncology played a major part. And during this period, this 30, 40 years, prevention measures improved. Interventions for infection-related cancers and cancer susceptibility gen research, and drug and surgical research reduction. Uh, strategies uh, have another 
there are the uh, other factors uh, causing this decline. And the quality of life measurements and better toxicity management of the population and less uh, intensive therapies uh, and the palliative care integration uh, played a great deal of this uh, good uh, trend. And uh, after uh, survival, uh, uh, the uh, late effects and the surveillance strategies uh, early detection of recurrence and uh, amelioration for uh, patient quality. And in imaging uh, advances, uh, uh, advances uh, digital mam mammograms, PET scanning, low dose chemotherapy, uh, uh, computers, enhanced MRI technologies, all had their uh, uh, role in this trend. Uh, we diagnosed tumors in earlier stage. We have good information about clear picture of disease spread. And we have optimal treatment strategies. And we perform limited, minimally invasive surgery for treatment of this uh, cancer. Uh, I want to. Uh, I don't want to remiss the acknowledgement of medical oncology or radiation oncology. But since I'm a surgical oncologist, I want to talk about the impact of surgical oncology on this uh, uh, trend. Uh, during the last four years, we do more local excisions to early cancer because we detect uh, low-grade malignancy uh, with uh, tumor screening uh, procedures. We do mucosal resection, submucosal endoscopy resection, and we do local excision in many cancers because we uh, detect cancer in early stage. And we do uh, we do uh, endoscopic resection, and we do uh, yeah, uh, and neoadjuvant uh, treatment in many cancers, uh, namely rectal cancer, breast as a cancer, gastric cancer, we have very good results in terms of mortality and tumor recurrence. And we do endoscopic open uh, laparoscopic or robotic surgery in many uh, gastrointestinal cancer. As cytoreductive surgery and heated intraperitoneal chemotherapy uh, it's, the, it's the, I think, the top topic in surgical oncology in the last 10 years. Uh, I'll, I'll talk about this later. And we have uh, very good palliation uh, techniques. Now, this is, I think this is our case for uh, local rectal excision of rectal tumor here. And this is, we do this uh, uh, we detect uh, early cancer or precancerous lesion endoscopically, thanks to screening endoscopy, endoscopy, if you find this kind of early cancer or precancerous lesion, we remove it safely. Endoscopy under endoscopy, 
Thank you, Serge. Yeah. And there are many equipment developed uh, to resect early cancer with endoscopy. Hybrid knife is one of these equipments. Yeah. And this is a transanal uh, minimally invasive tumor resection. And we resect even liver laparoscopically robotically with minimal invasive patient and safely. Most of colorectal cancer now is treated uh, minimal invasively, as seen here, laparoscopic surgery. Peritoneal cavity. Peritoneal cavity represents the site of metastasis in about half of colorectal cancer and gastric cancer. 75% of ovarian, uh, advanced ovarian cancer. Also, peritoneal cavity is the sole site of metastasis in one fourth of colorectal cancer and 30% gastric cancer and 70% ovarian cancer. And with HIPEC, we uh, uh, remove all tumors in the abdominal cavity. We peel all uh, peritoneum containing the metastasis, and we uh, irrigate uh, after after resection. We irrigate abdominal cavity uh, with heated chemotherapy. With this concentration of uh, antiplastic agents is. Uh, increased 100,000 times in the cavity with low toxicity because the uh, chemotherapeutic agents we use in this procedure are not absorbed to the circulation, so it has low toxicity. Improved tumor preparation uh, of antibiotics with hyperemia is possible and direct antitumor activity of hyperemia is shown. Uh, And with this uh, technique, uh, I mean uh, the uh, cytoreductive surgery plus hyper survival in peritoneal metastasis drop significantly. This guy shows, uh, this illustration shows the uh, uh, procedure after uh, removing all cancer uh, tissue from the abdominal wall. We irrigate abdominal wall with chemotherapy for about 90 minutes. The heat is about 41 to 43 degrees. We irrigate abdominal wall about 90 minutes with this chemotherapy age. Before uh, this procedure, we have to select patient uh, benefited from this procedure because uh, uh, it's not possible to do this procedure to all peritoneal metastasis. Peritoneal metastasis. Uh, we have to select patients and we have to have uh, uh, peritoneal cancer uh, index, uh, certain uh, uh, cancer index, and we should decide we should gauge this index before surgery. And we do this under CT with CT or PET CT combined with PET CT. We uh, significantly uh, before operation know how much tumor in the abdominal cavity. PET CT, uh, PET CT has about 78% sensitivity to uh, plus this information. We have to know that after this procedure, the completeness of cytoreduction should be zero. This means R zero resection. There is no macroscopic tumor left behind. But in some cancers, CC1 can be acceptable. This means produce persisting. Uh, 
uh, after operation is less than 2.5 centimeters. CC2 or 3 is not uh, good for this operation. During this operation, the uh, divide uh, 13 compartments in an abdominal cavity, and we remove all compartment individually. We peel the peritoneum and we resect the resectable tumors on the bowel and the mesentery. Easily resectable tumors found in the liver, we remove those tumors. And after these procedures, after these procedures, the closed abdominal cavity, this diagram shows the operation. And yeah, this is, we peel all Gilson capsule, capsule of liver. If the metastasis is found on the liver capsule, we uh, peel all capsule if the metastasis is present. If uh, easily resectable uh, metastasis is found intra-cranchial liver, we resect even this tumor during the procedure. Uh, right uh, subdiaphragmatic, left subdiaphragmatic, and the uh, hilar resection, and we remove uh, lesser sac uh, tumors, and then uh, whole omentum is re removed. And uh, this is omentum you see here. It's the uh, tumor, thicken it with the tumor. This patient was uh, pseudomyxoma peritoneum cases. Uh, cases. Uh, this is show in our case, this uh, was a colon cancer. We were doing a uh, peritoneal uh, surgery here. We peel away the peritoneum, as you've seen here, uh, the tumor of the peritoneum is uh, removed with peeling this. Yeah. yeah, you see here the tumor in the peritoneal surface removed. Yeah. And after uh, after this uh, resections, we put uh, um, uh, we put catheters to irrigate and uh, to drain the uh, uh, chemotherapeutic uh, agent containing uh, serum, heated serum, and during ninety minutes about. 70 liters of uh, uh, serum uh, circulates in uh, abdominal cavity. Now, in, in a new version of this technique, aerosol, aerosolized pressurized chemotherapy used intraperitoneally. We open, uh, we closed completely abdominal wall with carbon dioxide pressurized uh, infusion pump, we give, uh, we irrigate abdominal cavity with the, uh, with the, uh, uh, with the uh, chemotherapy the containing uh, serum. This is the, yeah. And uh, this, um, Chimney seen here is the for carbon dioxide. We see the pressure here. And uh, this monitor shows us the pressure and shows us the heat in the abdominal cavity. And uh, yeah, and shows the duration of uh, radiation. And for colorectal cancer, periton cancer index should be less than 20. I'll tell you what the uh, what the uh, uh, peritoneal cancer index is. I think later on. And for recurrent peritoneal metastasis of colorectal cancer, uh, it should be less than ten. This means the uh, this means you should have less than uh, the first operation, the uh, rest tissue should be less than the first operation. 
for gastric cancer, peritoneal cancer index should be less than 13 in order to achieve acceptable result. For gastric cancer, it's also about 20 peritoneal index. But in gastric cancer, we can use this technique as an adjuvant therapy for T3, T4 cancers with the lymph node. Uh, we do this in the first operation. Uh, after removal of the stomach, we do cytoreductive surgery and give uh, heat chemotherapy in the first operation. Yeah, the best result obtained in, as I mentioned before, in ovarian cancer, the peritoneal metastasis, colorectal cancer, and uh, uh, uterine cancer. Yeah. The best results we obtained from uh, pseudomyxoma peritonea, this uh, treatment modality first used in those patients, it's very uh, dramatic. Uh, after operation, these patients have very long time uh, survival and uh, he's very survival. In some patients, this is not amenable because uh, if the uh, bowel is obstructed in the uh, more than several areas, it's not good to have a, it's not good to do this surgery because the results are not so good. If the mesentery comes uh, with the, uh, with the uh, tumor, it's very difficult to save the major vascular uh, area and it's not, uh, the complication should be very high, so we don't do that. Uh, infiltrative tumor deposits between the folds of mesentery is another, uh, of the, this procedure. And uh, if the in, uh, in certain cancer, if the peritoneal cancer index is more than 20, it shouldn't be attempted according to my. In the uh, parallel aortic lymph node uh, positivity, it's a, uh, it's a relative uh, contraindication, I think, for this. In some uh, patients, we do uh, our big lymphadenectomy, uh, say in ovarian cancer, we do that with cytoreductive uh, surgery. It's estimated that around 16% of patients with colon cancer peritone metastasis can be cured by this cytoreductive and high-pack procedure. In the past, this was around zero. Now it's about 16%. Yeah. And uh, we uh, use um, uh, mitomycin uh, or uh, cisplatin. Sometimes we uh, use both of them. These chemotherapy agents are not absorbed from abdominal cavity, so their toxicity are very low. Uh, so we give uh, doses of these chemotherapies. And the median survival is approximately uh, 21 months in, uh, in uh, uh, peritoneal uh, tumor metastasis or colorectal cancer. But with this procedure, we have 42.9% median survival. This means we double the survival with this procedure. Yeah, results after treatment are encouraging in particular cases of colorectal gynecological cancer and in some uh, pancreatic cancer, gastric cancer. It's a trial for these two cancers last week. And uh, um, why we have uh, uh, decrease in mortality because we treat patients uh, with low
low mortality. We resect, uh, we resect liver, uh, we uh, do segmentectomies, we do uh, sub-segmentectomies, so we remove very small part of uh, liver. We can do that laparoscopically, or we can do that uh, with robotic surgery. And we can do radio frequency ablation. We can do this in tumors, even in cytoreductive surgery. We can uh, do this procedure with uh, uh, interventional uh, radiology, or we can do it uh, during operation. Many cancers are increasing, as I mentioned, due to invasive encountering of carcinogenesis, likely due to the combination of environmental and lifestyle factors and changes in screening diagnosis or in human disease. Uh, lots of uh, diagnosis. But survival in some specific cancers are decreasing significantly. Improvement in detection and uh, treatment techniques and the better understanding tumor biology of spread has invaluable contribution to, our, to this outcome. Advanced abdominal surgery is one of the major elements of this favorable proceeding. The aggressive tumor surgical removal, that means tumor tighter reduction, coupled with interperitoneal chemotherapy, now represents the cornerstone of the advanced abdominal oncology surgery. Cytoreductive surgery and hyper is a complex, complex therapeutic system which requires highly specialized human resources, complex technological facilities, very much depending from the expertise of the uh, involved. The future of treatment of peritoneal carcinosis appears correlated to the strong cooperation with medical oncologists, select patients, and focusing on timing of treatment uh, which in our experience is crucial. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Professor, uh, thank you very much uh, for your uh, compressive uh, presentation. So far uh, uh, from the audience, uh, they are very happy with uh, listening to your uh, experience and your uh, presentations, details presentation. Uh, there is, uh, up to now, I don't see any emails, uh, any uh, uh, question does not, uh, so far, does not uh, reflect on my screen. Uh, so if you have any other uh, point to, uh, uh, to talk or to say verbally without presentation, still we have another 10 minutes. Uh, you can use this uh, time. Uh, or uh, we can we can compare. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, in oncologic surgery, uh, we do endoscopy. Uh, as I mentioned in my uh, presentation, we do uh, uh, minimal invasive surgery, and we do uh, uh, surgery through endoscopy. This is a very new, and uh, I think it's very uh, exciting point here because. Uh, we, uh, uh, thanks to a screening endoscopy, colonoscopy, uh, uh, we find very early stage those tumors and we remove tumor uh, submucosally. We do uh, uh, submucosal dissection. We remove these tumors with full thickness uh, bowel wall uh, removal. Because we have, happily, we have, uh, thanks to technology, uh, closing equipments, very safely closing equipments after removal of these cancer in the bowel wall. And this is very exciting. But before this, we have to know this uh, gastrointestinal tumors are uh, 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 well selected. They should be well selected because these tumors should be uh, uh, in a mucosa. Uh, it should be T1 or T2 because if the tumor is uh, more than T2, a tumor sh must have uh, lymph node metastasis. So a uh, radical uh, surgical uh, intervention is necessary. But uh, 
for those patients having uh, T1, uh, T2 tumors, we resect those tumors without uh, opening up the abdominal wall, without resecting the bowel, and we do it endoscopically. Uh, we do it, uh, we inject uh, dye to see the uh, uh, contour of the tumor, and we resect with a safe margin uh, tumors uh, uh, in a colon, in the esophagus, in the gastric wall, and we do that. And uh, in the past, those uh, patients were um, uh, uh, treated with a major operation. And the um, uh, complication and mortality of operation is that those operations are uh, significantly high. So uh, I think it's very exciting. Those patients are treated with this minimal uh, technique. It's okay. Thank you very much, uh, Professor, for additional uh, information you shared with us. Uh, thanks for Thank your you. joining Thank and uh, valuable time and contribution Thank you. Uh, to, Thank our, you. Uh, to our webinars. Uh, and hope that uh, our our listener and our participant, thanking a lot uh, for detailed uh, presentation, uh, was very informative. Uh, I. Thank you. I hope they benefit uh, as I do, and they benefit Thank a lot you. from your presentation Thank and you. a lot of different techniques that you are using. Thank you very much for participating. Sure.